In this tutorial, I will explain how to work with the Where I Am calendar. To the end user, the calendar looks like this. This is the example from the CRM sample application. The calendar can show appointments, tasks, or events. The user can create events, click on the event and see its details, delete events, change views, traverse the calendar, and so on. So what does the configurator have to do to define such a calendar in his application? First of all, it's important to understand that the calendar can only show appointment objects. Appointment here is just a name for all objects that have start time and end time. It can be an appointment, or it can be an event, or it can be a task. You can provide any name to your appointment-like object. The important thing here is that this object must have a number of required attributes, such as start time, end time, and subject. Let's look at an example. Suppose that we create an application that manages tasks or staff members, and each staff member can look at his tasks in a calendar. For simplicity, we will assume that our staff members will be represented by the regular user object that AwareAM cre creates automatically for each business space. For more details about this object, please read the user guide or watch the Access Levels tutorial. So we need an object to represent tasks. Since tasks will be displayed on a calendar, it has to be an appointment-like object with a number of required attributes. To create such an object, we select the Business Objects node in the tree, click the right mouse button to bring up the pop-up menu, and select the Add Appointment Object menu item. This automatically adds a new object to our system with all the required attributes already defined. We can give our own name to this object. We'll call it task. Let's now go through the attributes that AwareAIM has added for us. Note that you cannot change the name or type of these attributes. The important attributes here are start time, end time, and subject, which define the start time, end time of the task and its subject respectively. You may or may not use the other attributes, such as priority and others, but you must use these three, since they will be shown on the calendar. We can also add any attributes we want to this object. In this particular case, we will add the owner of the task, that is the staff member who this task is for. The owner will be a reference to the regular user object. For more details about references, please watch the Relationships tutorial. We will also assume for simplicity that staff members will be creating their own tasks. So we will add a rule that will automatically assign logged in user as the owner of the task. For more details about business rules, please watch the business rules tutorial. So when the task is being created, we assign the logged in user 
as the owner of the task. Note also that AwareAIM has automatically created an appointments business object group. And it has added our task object to this group. All objects representing appointments should be added to this group. For more details about business object groups, please watch the business object groups tutorial. Now we are ready to set up a calendar. To do this, we will need to define a query. For more details about queries, please watch the queries tutorial. So we will give it a name. The query will look for tasks allocated to the currently logged in user. So it will look like this. Find task where task owner is equal to the logged in regular user. Now to get the query to display the results as a calendar, we select the display as property and then select the calendar scheduler radio button here. There's a, there's a few properties of the calendar that you can set up here, such as which views to display and the default view. We can also define whether users will be able to move, resize or delete tasks. On this dialog here, we can specify whether there will be any operations displayed when the user right clicks on the tasks in the calendar. There are also a few other useful properties in the properties window of the query. Using item display rules property, for example, we can display calendar entries in different colors. Using the Editing and Resources property, we can control how tasks are created and edited in the calendar. The standard method will display the default form of the object when the user clicks on the cell in the calendar. This behavior can be overridden by specifying a custom process. For now, we will accept the default options, but I will also enable all, all views except the timeline views. I will talk about timeline views a little later in this tutorial. Before we can test our calendar, I will add a menu operation to start our query to the menu of our visual perspective. For more details about Visual Perspectives, please watch the Visual Perspectives tutorial. Now we can test our calendar. So I put the version under test and log into the browser. Now we can run our query. And as you can see, it displays the calendar, which initially is empty, of course. So let's create a task by clicking somewhere on the calendar. Here we can specify the subject of the task. The starting time. The end time of the task. And here we can also specify whether the task will be a recurring one. 
and now the task has been created and displayed on the calendar. We can now click on the task to edit it, or we can move, resize the task, or delete it. Let's now create another staff member. And now let's log out and log in as this staff member. I now specify John as the username. And now let's run our query again. You can see that the calendar is empty because it only shows the tasks of the current user and there are no tasks for John yet. Let's create a task for John. So we have created it for the same day as the admins task. So as you can see the calendar displays only tasks for the currently logged in user. We are logged in as John so the calendar only displays John's tasks. And we can uh, change the views and look at the task in the day view for example. Let's now look at the timeline views that I have mentioned before. Timeline views are useful when you want to show schedules of some resource. Usually a resource is a person, a staff member, a doctor, a customer, but it can also be a machine for example. For our application, let's assume that we want to look at the tasks of each staff member so that we can see a list of staff members on the left and a list of their tasks on the right. Timeline views can display the data just like this. Here is an example from the CRM sample application where it displays tasks of staff members. We can see a list of staff members on the left and their tasks on the right. Let's create a calendar with timeline views to show tasks of staff members. We could have enabled timeline views for the query we have already created, but this query only shows the tasks of the current user, so the timeline view will be quite limited. Let's create another query that shows tasks of all staff members and then the timeline view will show schedules of every staff member. So we create a new query, give it a name and this query will be looking for all tasks. We select the calendar schedule a radio button again and this time we will also enable all timeline views. For the timeline views we also need to select resources. The timeline views actually display two lists, a list of resources, staff members in our case on the left, and a list of tasks on the right. The query defines a list of tasks, and to define a list of resources, we need to specify the resource that a particular task belongs to. The resource must be represented as a relationship between the task 
and the object representing the, the resource. In our case, this resource is the reference to the owning staff member. So I select the editing and resources property and then select the owner attribute as the first resource. We can then select the attributes of the resource that will be displayed on the in the list on the left. Probably just the login name in our case. Let's now add our query to the menu and see how it works. So now I log into our system again. It doesn't matter whether I log in as admin or John, the calendar will look the same since it shows all tasks. Now I run the query and I see the timeline day view which shows schedules for one day only. Let's go to the day when we have created our task. We can see now that there are two staff members, Admin and John, and we can see their tasks. In this tutorial, I have explained the basics of working with the calendar. Make sure that you explore the many different options of the calendar. And for more details, please refer to the user guide.